Well, here we are at the National Astronomy Meeting in Glasgow, and I've just come from a session discussing the first results from the Herschel Space Observatory. And I'm joined now by Professor Matt Griffin from the University of uh, Cardiff, um, and he is a principal investigator of the SPIRE instrument, um, which is one of the instruments flying on the Herschel Space Observatory. So how is the mission progressing so far? It was launched um, nearly a year ago now. That's right. Yeah, it's progressing extremely well. It was launched in a, a flawless launch from an Ariane 5 in uh, French Guiana on May 14th last year. And the first six months of the mission were devoted to checking everything out and doing test observations of all kinds and making sure that all of the instruments and all the spacecraft systems worked well. And as with any uh, complicated system, there were a few teething troubles, but they're all now overcome. All of the three instruments are working perfectly. The telescope is in uh, perfect focus and alignment and uh, some trial science observations have been done and we heard about some results today and routine observations are now progressing and a lot of the key programs that are designed to um, carry out the core science of Herschel are now well underway. And so you're the PI for the SPIRE instrument, um, what in particular will that be looking at? <coughs> well SPIRE covers the longer wavelength part of the Herschel range from wavelengths uh, between 200 microns and about 700 microns. Most of that region is uh, unobservable from the ground because of the atmosphere. And our instrument has a camera which takes pictures in three sub-millimeter colors, if you will. And it also has a spectrometer to look at the signatures of atoms and molecules in interstellar space. And its main scientific theme is to look at star formation, which can be done locally in our own galaxy, where we can see things close up. Um, but also we can look at star formation occurring in bursts, star formation writ large, which is the process by which galaxies like ours were formed. So we look at that in very distant objects and we can build up a picture of the star formation history of the universe where we can see the big picture by looking far away and therefore into the past to see how galaxies formed and evolved and we can see the details in our own galaxy and for instance learn about how stars like the Sun might have formed in the past. And will it be working sort of um, in unison with the other instruments or will it, will it be producing results by itself? Uh, very much in unison with the other instruments. That's one of the design features of Herschel, that the three instruments have been very carefully um, uh, designed to be complementary to each other. One good example of that is that uh, the sister instrument of Spire is called PAX and it covers the shorter wavelength end of the range and the two together provide astronomers with an ability to uh, look at uh, a source over a factor of 10 in wavelength. And that factor of 10 is the region in which star formation uh, um, clouds uh, emit most of their radiation. So I was very pleased uh, at uh, what I've seen today and in other presentations of early results that a lot of the teams are combining together data from the PAX and SPIRE instruments as though they were really just one observational facility. And there's numerous um, different projects um, from uh, organised by different teams around the country and, and even the world um, looking at different aspects of star formation, interstellar dust and so on. Yeah. Are there any particular projects that you're especially looking forward to seeing results from? Well, one of the great features of Herschel is that it offers something for everybody from, the, from our own solar system to the most distant galaxies. And it's almost a matter of taste as to what you know, excites any individual. Um, uh, some people are particularly interested and excited by what uh, Herschel will tell us about distant galaxies. My own favourite <coughs> is what it's going to tell us about the ecology of the Milky Way. We've seen some beautiful pictures from Herschel showing that the interstellar medium, the clouds of gas and dust from which stars form, and the, the material that's ejected by dying stars back into space, uh, all of this is part of the stellar interstellar cycle in our galaxy and it's a process that Herschel will tell us a great deal about. So I think when the mission is finished, we'll have a much more um, clear and complete picture of the, the life of the galaxy. That's what I find personally most interesting. And how long is the mission expected to last for? I mean, we've only just started the science phase. Well, Herschel is a limited lifetime mission because it has a big tank of helium to cool the instruments. And when that's run out, then they won't work anymore. So we have limited time to work with. We have another um, two and a half years basically before the helium runs out and that's one of the reasons why it was very important to get everything working as quickly and as effectively as possible because uh, you know, every day that uh, one doesn't do science is a day wasted. It's not a mission that will, will carry on past its uh, design lifetime. Well, it sounds like we've got an exciting couple of years uh, ahead and no doubt beyond as the results continue to uh, be analysed. We certainly have. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Pleasure.